October 3rd. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Jude 24. What is the great evil of which the true saints of God most stand in jeopardy, and which their timid, fearful hearts most dread? Is it not secret and outward backsliding from God after conversion? Surely it is, as the experience of every honest, upright, God-fearing man will testify. It is his consolation, then, to know that Jesus is able to keep him from falling. This is the most overwhelming evil that stares the believer in the face. Some have imperfectly taught in the word, are dreading awful apathy from the faith here, and final condemnation from the presence of God hereafter, believing that Christ has made full satisfaction for their sins to divine judgment, has canceled the mighty debt, has imputed to them his righteousness, has blotted out their iniquities, has called, renewed, sanctified, and taken full possession of them by his Spirit, and has ascended up on high to plead their cause with the Father, that yet, after all this stupendous exercise of power and this matchless display of free grace, they may be left to utter apathy from God, and be finally and eternally lost. If there is one doctrine more awful in its nature, distressing in its consequences, and directly opposed to the glory of God, and the honor of Christ, then another, methinks it is this. Others, again, more clearly taught by the Spirit, are heard to say, I believe in the stability of the covenant, and the unchangeableness of God's love, and in the faithfulness of my heavenly Father. But I fear lest some day, under some sharp temptation, some burst of indwelling sin, when the enemy shall come in as a flood, I shall fall. To the wounding of my peace, to the shame of my brethren, and to the dishonoring of Christ. Dear believer, truly you would fall, were he to leave you to your own keeping for one moment. But Jesus is able to keep you from falling. Read the promises, believe them, rest upon them. A simple glance will present to the believer's eye a threefold cord by which he is kept from falling. In the first place, God the Father keeps him, kept by the power of God. The power that created and upholds the world keeps the believer. The eternal purpose, love, and grace of the Father keeps him. This is the first cord. Again, God the Son keeps him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The covenant engagements, the perfect obedience, the atoning death of Emmanuel, keep the believer. This is the second cord. Yet again, God the Holy Spirit keeps him. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, or shall put him to flight. The tender love, the covenant faithfulness, and the omnipotent power of the eternal Spirit keep the believer. This is the third cord. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken, but with these promises of the triune God to keep his people from falling, he has wisely and graciously connected the diligent, prayerful use of all the means which he has appointed for this end.